Happy Monday, everybody. Yo! Two weird things. Yes. Oh, wait. Yeah. I am on. Okay. Am I on? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I, I, that's weird. I, I guess I didn't. Oh, yeah. There it is. Okay. Uh, hot damn. Hot googly dig dog. Hi, everybody. Uh, hey, Justin. Yo. We could talk about this at the happy hour, but look what came in. Uh, oh, the opal. The yeah. Opal yeah. Oh, cool. Finally. <laughs> it's a it's a uh, an independent uh, IP tunneling device that preserves a set amount of bandwidth, so you have full duplex communication with up to two call-in people. That and get ready for this allows them to interrupt each other and talk at the same time. Are you grasping the implications of this? Porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Uh, no, uh, it, it, it means that Skype ducking could become a total thing of the past. Yeah, we, we still have to figure out all the setup and stuff, so we're not quite sure when we'll have it uh, yeah, in well, in uh, put, put into place, but hopefully Bryce, this week. cold water killjoy, everybody. Uh, no, I'm just... <laughs> uh, but it'll, uh, you know, it'll be, it should be cool. It should be a good thing. Uh, still got a lot of stuff to figure out with it, though. Uh, yeah, that'd be pretty nice. Uh, you were saying this is the thing that uh, Heaton was using at the Blaze, is that right? Uh, yes, and and they well, market I, it uh, yeah. to radio folks uh, all, all across. But but one thing, like hands on, uh, the only uh, it, the 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 cold water factor that Bryce is referring to is that it 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 says that it needs a static IP, but I mean what? But the question is for what? Is that so that you have an easy URL to use? That auto configures, or is that, um, uh, you know, can you use a dynamic routing service for the static IP? Right. Uh, that's that's the stuff that we don't exactly know, but uh, but I'm I was confident enough that uh, we have a two week return window, and so we're gonna we're gonna jump in and and see uh, if everything works. Not not to mention figuring out, you know, if we need to add someone to Skype, you know, how will that work if we're still using Skype for the video portion of this? Uh, but oh, I would imagine just both sides mute and then Skype is video only. But then if we have a th an extra person on Skype who's not on that thing, then if neither side is giving audio, that, so there there are fringe cases that will come up that we need to solve for now too. But uh, yeah, it, it'll be a cool thing. Uh, we we yeah. just got it in today. Is that right? Uh, yes, this morning. Cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. We're doing a lot of stuff. A lot of a lot of things are happening in this crazy mixed up world we're living in. Man, all we can do is control what we're controlling. Keep keep going. First and ten. We're we're on the fifty yard line of life. Let's throw a Hail Mary touchdown for us. Is is Rick Sanchez your speechwriter now? <laughs> 
I was about to say, 50-yard line is not traditionally the location for not a very Mary. Good. It's not a great... <laughs> Just a, that's more like a regular Mary. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, that was yeah. like uh, the, the Buddha judge when they asked him about, oh my God, you know, the, the loss of Kobe Bryant. And not that many of us would do better than that. I think it's, ah, oh, he's one of the best players on the field. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Any field he was on. Field of dreams. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, there was dead people there. Fuck. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Oh, geez, just. Uh. <laughs> um. Yeah, man. Crazy. Uh. Crazy. Crazy times. Uh. Oh, uh, on the subject of Field of Dreams, and yeah. talking to somebody who's doing a 1990s era podcast. Yes. Um, 90s was really about a lot of the surreal movies about death. You know what dreams may come, yeah. ghost. You know, you just start looking at like all of these movies that were dealing with that issue and just these sort of magical realism. Man, was what dreams may come? Yeah, I guess that was before 2000. Wow. Yeah, it was late 90s if I remember correctly. But but certainly, um, yeah, I think it was one of those things where special effects were good enough that you could do a magical realism story without having the effect kind of bring you out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's maybe why, I mean, also there was just kind of that run on, on science fiction and horror and stuff like that. So maybe there was just uh, like, Oh, let's do a drama version of it with like scary elements. Well, I don't, well there's a lot of what's dealing with themes of death though, too. I wonder if like, is it like, cause aging baby boomers realizing, Oh shoot one day. Yeah. I mean, that was the craziest thing about going through all these Billy Crystal movies is that like, uh, they're all basically about, you know, men in their late thirties trying to figure out what it all means, which I didn't realize that I was being called to watch these movies now in a totally <laughs> different perspective than when I saw them first as a boy in the early nineties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You guys uh, ready to do the show? You ready? Uh, yep. Uh, <coughs> Oh, by out. the way, Quibi launched. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched a bunch of the shows this morning. Yeah, I'd say uh, all we all laughed until we were shut inside with nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> well, let's see if we keep laughing, though. <laughs> some, of, some, of that, some of that stuff is... I, don't know. Yeah, all right. I, I looked at, Not on my Apple TV. I'm like, I'm not going to watch any of this. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Wait, was there one of them that you said, Bryce, was... Uh, uh, <laughs> Gay minstrel ring. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, that's straight. No, <laughs> the the game show. The G A Y M E. The oh show uh, oh, is that is that not the that's straight thing that 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 was posted in the group chat? Uh, 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 it, that is the name of the show is the game show. Okay, got it. Um, but it's it's it is like a weird, like they get two straight guys, mostly UCB comedians, plus like. Uh, a, a, two like advisors, like also comedian people, and have them have these straight guys do like gay culture quizzes and games, uh, for like six minutes, and then they crown one of them. Oh, and it ends with like a faux drag like walk off, and they crown from a straight guy from straight guy in in gay face, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they and. The winner is determined queen of the straight. Oh, Christ. Why? So, uh, yeah. TVZ Gun says Quibi is free with T-Mobile for 90 days. Uh, uh, not on what? the, not, on, it's, not it's, on the, it's, not even, not on the plan that I'm on. I oh. don't get Quibi for free on my T-Mobile. Also, it's only free if you consider that there's no. Or a paid Quibi member? It is a 90 day trial. Okay. Also free implies that there's no cost for having watched it. <laughs> I mean, it's only six <laughs> minutes of my time. So. Yeah. yeah. Free ignores the human cost of Queeby. <laughs> I'm up a quick bite. All right, oh, let me just get a real quick water. Okay. Uh, the, f the very top show that it recommended to me on on it um, is, what is it called? Survive. And it's with um, uh, uh, the, the new Jean Grey. Um, the the redhead from Game of Thrones. Sophie, Sophia Tucker? Sophie Tucker? Is that it? Sophia? Oh, that sounds right. Uh, so Sophie, some, I don't think it's Sophie Tucker. I think that's a, a I think that's the singer who does that the new Pope theme song. What is, what is her name? Is it? Um, anyway, she plays a suicidal girl in like a, uh, um, in one of those like halfway houses. Sophie Turner, thank you, uh, for like you know young adults who have like depression and ang and anorexia and stuff. 
Uh, and the first queevy is her showing you around the house and then her sneaking into the pharmacy and stealing a bunch of pills. So uh, uh, that's that's what they're leading with. And Quibby. Um, quick bite. Man, Quibby, huh? Quibby. What's going on with this Quibby? Man, just when you think you'd quibbied your last quibble, here we are. The BBC news the BBC news thing is good. I think news is the right thing for Quibby. Like getting a 6 minute update from the BBC, that works just fine. I'll tell you what, that's I'm glad that they spent all their money there. <laughs> all right. You guys ready to do the show now? Yeah. All right, all right then, Andrew. I'll count you in in 3 2 Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello! Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. And Bryce Castillo. Hey, that's me, everybody. Gentlemen, I bring you some breaking news from Parliament in the UK, that is. No, oh, I, uh, I, I, I thought it was a new album from Parliament Funkadelic. I thought uh, <laughs> George Clinton and the P-Funk All-Stars had something very important to say. That's the next story, Brian. Thanks for spoiling it. The uh, mothership has landed. This is weird things, by the way. <laughs> no. I, I, you read a thing, you're like, man, that's cool. That would be a cool idea and a story because this is a neat thing. Um, and now it's a real thing, so maybe I don't use it in the story, or maybe I do. And then you just sit there going back and forth, um, if you're me. Uh, this was uh, a, from a few weeks ago, but um, kind of lost amid all the other news was apparently, you know, people walking back and forth in Parliament kind of ignored in the wall, in the hallway. There was a little brass keyhole in just this long corridor. And finally, you know, maintenance or somebody decided to see, hey, what's on the other side of this? They open the thing up, pull it open, a little door, a little wee door like that, a little hobbit door. They did not find hobbits inside of there. I swear to what, God, if this they, takes place on the 11th and a half story and somehow ends up in the mind of John Malkovich. Uh, it, kind of. Um, what they found was a entire corridor that's over 300 years old and an entire another room inside of there the secret room inside of the wait parliament. that's never that 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 hasn't been seen in how like did it did it show forensic evidence of having been undisturbed for a hundred plus years or was it sort of like a i mean obviously somebody knew about it but but just now their secret was out uh, um they do think there was like it looks like there may have been a light bulb that was installed in the 1950s, and, but they found things in there like a, a bricklayer had restored part of it and wrote in on the wall in pencil. This room was enclosed enclosed by Tom Porter, who was very fond of old ale. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's funny. And so I would oh wow graffiti from 1851. Jeez. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would guess, you know, when, when you think of secret passages in Parliament, the first thing that your mind goes to is World War II, right? But, but it seems like this is something that was in practice far longer than that. Yeah, yeah this, this apparently was used like when they would do coronations and they needed, I think, members of the Parliament needed another way to get to like the House of Commons to bypass all of that. Um, and that's one of the things too that that we kind of forget about in. Uh, Old culture, particularly where you had, you know, very different class levels and stuff, you would have situations where people would be together, but then you wanted to avoid the idea of having a mingle, the concept of the VIP. And that was a sort of thing that would often be built into buildings where, you know, you hear about the servants entrance and things like this. You look at things like dumb waiters and other stuff, things that we would engineer so we don't have to spend time around these other people. And yeah. sometimes that's the separate quarters, separate entrances. Or in the case like this is like a pathway that makes it easy to get from point A to point B. You know, in Washington, D.C., you know, has this sort of two where we have like tunnels and stuff for senators to move back and forth. And that's sort of kind of the expediency of it also because of weather. Uh, we've talked about in downtown L.A., there's a system of tunnels that go from like the courthouse to some of the other buildings. And uh, up until recently, like you could just walk up and open up a door, walk down there and find yourself in an underground in a basement below a street or whatever. And like criminal records and stuff just stored there in boxes. Oh, my God. 
That's crazy. Yeah. It was yeah, I, know, that- I know that when they redid a lot of downtown Indianapolis, that that was like a huge thing that they wanted to do was was uh, as they were putting in all this new construction for a basketball arena and a football stadium and a convention center was to connect them all through uh, uh, underground tunnels. Yeah, well, that's uh, we've talked about, too, is the Boring Company is doing in Las Vegas with the convention center. They just completed one leg of a tunnel just to connect one big, huge part of it to another. And yeah, you get like these different like yeah, we're looking at video right now the 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 secret underground tunnels in LA, which are just showing you a lot of what was built, what was down there, and just how much of this. You know, there was, you know, there's an entire abandoned subway line in LA that runs like several miles that sealed off at both ends. I mean, Dude, doesn't wow. that sound like? I mean, forgive me, prime real estate to be developed into some kind of like crazy shopping experience or something. You know, they've, they've done that in some cities where they have sort of like the underground where they've done that. Um, the problem can often be it's just the cost it would take to get it to code or the cost that it would take to just make it, you, you know, where you would almost be cons- better off just just drilling a new tunnel. Like if what you want is an underground shopping experience, you might as well just dig your own tunnel. Or, yeah, or yeah, you know, rent a building that's on the surface. But it's I think. And I think that has more to do with efficiency and not so much just, I mean, more to do with red tape or whatever than, because I think you're right. I think that I've seen several places that have done that, like in New York City and whatnot, there are a lot of these little kind of underground shopping facilities and stuff that were just these, where real estate was so prohibitively expensive, they're like, we'll make it work. So as we're discussing this, um, uh, full disclosure to the audio listeners, uh, Andrew's wearing a The Boring Company hat, so so I may be teeing him up here. But it makes me wonder about developing real estate just straight down. Because we, we've talked about you know Hyperloop tunnels and, and tunnels and forms of transportation. But if that valuable real estate is valuable enough to build up with sky, skyscrapers, have we talked a lot about the idea of just building down and down and down, you know, a, a thousand feet of, of, of reverse skyscrapers in the middle of Los Angeles? You know, a, a little bit. I think that's that certainly gets to what... Uh, you know, you know there there are uh, prior to you know Elon Musk and Boring Company a lot of other you know the, a lot of it turns out these people called cave people that were really into <laughs> you know, subterranean things but it's that the you know we were good, very good at using natural forms of that and now when you go look at a building when you, when they look at like any kind of building let's say in L A or New York you have to dig down in there because of the cement and the blocks whatever but you find that now they're building like these six story parking garages way underground like. Right here near Burbank, um, I mean, I was on on a walk and I went and I looked at like I think that where Warner Brothers is building this big, huge, you know, facility. I peered through the fence and let me see if I could show you um, what they're doing. And you look at like a big part of what they're trying to put together here is the. I can't. I'm going to show you this hole. Yeah. Okay. Not a lot of scale there, but let me zoom in, and you see the. You know that those structures on the other end. You know that's <laughs> those are buildings. <laughs> yeah, those are buildings, right? And so there, and this is just. I would look like this was just like a massive, massive hole. Like you could see a a backhoe digger there, and the you know over off to the corner there, and you get an idea of like, like you know yeah, if you're gonna build something now, you just dig, dig, dig pretty deep. But it is ridiculously expensive. You know, we use equipment that's one scale to do it. With automation and, you know, better machines and stuff, I think, yeah, I think that, you know, when Disney World, I think most of you know this, when they built Disney World, one of the things they looked at was in Disneyland, they had to have, you know, people running back and forth, pushing carts, moving all sorts of stuff. And they're like, we'd like a better way to, like, keep this park running. So basically, they built all of their infrastructure, and then they built the park over it. Right. And so... Mm -hmm. Underground Disney World is like a real thing, you know, and it's just this big part of what goes on underneath which, you. Which, by the way, not not to dip into after things territory, funny how that works when you begin with the ending in mind, how easy it is to do insane things if you have a plan that, that begins at the beginning and ends at the end. In fact, it's one of the old success tropes that it's like if you want to see how tall, uh, if you're walking downtown and there's a new skyscraper being built, if you want to know how tall it's going to be, all you have to do is see how deep they're digging the foundation. And then that will immediately clue you in. So uh, uh, that that tracks. But I guess um, uh, I guess as we're discussing this, man, 
I, I, I wonder what kind of technological advances would have to happen for you to maybe have a mine shaft that goes like straight down so far that you're below everything deep enough that you won't disturb a single fine, uh, foundation. You won't disturb a single uh, electrical conduit gas line or anything by just building out, you know, as I think of the, these, these icicles, mm -hmm. these, these stalag, uh, stalactites going straight down these reverse um, uh, uh, skyscrapers. Well, think about it. This is that look at how often we discover a drug tunnel. Okay. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, which I believe that, just happened this past week. Another one from Tijuana to San Diego, which was also the plot of an um, entire season of the weeds. And those things aren't super deep. It's just, but once you go down to 15, 20 feet, even from the surface, you just can't even detect that it's there because it's the way the ground. Conditions, et cetera. Oh, which, which actually tees up an interesting, I don't know if we're choking up. Oh, okay. We're back. Um, uh, that tees up an interesting weird thingsy story that I saw just a couple of days ago. Maybe, maybe it was just yesterday, but seismological equipment normally has to deal with the fact that business as usual from humanity creates a certain level of seismic background noise that makes that they have to work around similar to light pollution. If you're trying to study the stars, like there's going to be some amount of light pollution and you do your best to deal with it. The coronavirus and the subsequent quarantine and the subsequent dampening of economic activity has created a unique situation where seismologists are able to get higher fidelity readings than they would normally get because everybody's just taking it easy at home for a bit. Yeah, it's it's one of those interesting examples to see. I'm sure that uh, <clears throat> we're going to see that for a while, cloud cover or some of the haze over some cities is probably, I'd love to see what like the haze is like in LA and uh, curious to know, um, you know, we shut down some, we You're don't talk about the atmospheric ports. haze, the, uh, uh, the mm -hmm. air. Yep. And then, you know, we don't use the observatory here as much because more of the light pollution, which really hasn't changed much, but it is, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, you know, run interesting experiment we're running. Yeah, man. Uh, what a what a <laughs> what a what a crazy idea! You know that that this is a, at least something that we can observe while everybody just decided to stay home. <laughs> yeah, know? our article there said that LA's uh, because of this, that LA's air quality has been the best it's been in decades, and and it's one of the things that I argue for. Like uh, one of the advantages of let's say of like electric cars, and uh, is that. When you're, even if you're using a fossil fuel to do it, or even if you're, or best case, maybe like natural gas, but if you're doing that, that takes place at a facility further away, and generally speaking, where the filters are much better and you get less of the pollutants in the atmosphere as opposed to things that are going through mufflers and stuff, right. in theory. But, but, but in, in, in other words, like like the, the counter argument to, I bought a Tesla, I'm being green, and then somebody snidely says, whatever, bro, where's your electricity comes from? Comes from coal. That's a coal-powered car. You're a bad person. But... The coal is all processed in one central facility with the stated goal of removing greenhouse gases and scrubbing and, and having emissions be as clean as possible. Yeah, in theory, and the, the idea that those emissions are not being pushed out in your driveway. You know, the idea is that you're, you're displacing those emissions or somewhere else. So for local things, and we've talked about before about how a hundred years ago, what were the streets like? You know, and you know, you read a description of what the streets of Chicago, you know, the turn of the century, you know, 100, 1898, you know, what was it like? Manure everywhere, your coal was being burned everywhere, the air was thick, it was sewage in the streets. It was just a thing that if we, our nostalgic view of what those things were like are nothing like they really were and a way more dirty environment. And also the argument I make that you know, I think we're progressing naturally towards a cleaner environment, no matter what. You know, because we just we like to be clean when it's efficient. You know? Right. Well, yeah, yeah it's, and, it's. I think a lot, a lot of the green tech that we have that like has grown up over the past decade are are now coming to, uh, you know, for full maturation. You know, when we talk about mm -hmm. where, what battery capacity and stuff like that is, like this is this is eventually just going to bring us to a place where this will be cheaper and easier and that's we're always as a human race biased against cheaper and easier you know and it's and i think that the idea of that trade off like how and it's not it's not an easy thing to say like oh should we put all this money into this now 
when it could be a tremendously to shifting, when it could be tremendously expensive, may actually slow down growth and prevent it later on versus, you know, uh, business as usual or whatever, or the idea that if you think things are improving and you look at trying to deal right now with, you know, the coronavirus is the idea of like, you know, there's this debate like, oh, should we shut down the economy to the point that we have versus let it run its course versus this or that? And you see these different faces of that argument of like, well, the price we pay later on is way worse than what we're paying right now or et cetera. So, you know, it's one way to kind of look at it where it's hard to sort of go, I'm 100 percent this. Or I'm 100 percent that. It's like, well, you can't ignore the cost of either where we could be going with climate change or the economic cost we policy now. Well, I'll tell you what you can be 100% on and not have to worry about the economic cost because it's totally worth it is if you head on over to patreon.com slash weird things. Hell yeah, Brian. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go if you want to support the show. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today, but you want to know what any bit of cash that you can peel off for this program keeps us giving you the programming you need each and every week. You get a custom RSS feed. You get the After Things podcast a little bit quicker than you would otherwise. Guys, I can't spell this out any clearer. Patreon.com slash weird things. A cool story from the frontiers of technology, space, et cetera, um, is, man, like, when I first heard this, I'm like, that ain't impossible. And like, I love, I love me space. I love me space exploration and stuff. And I heard this like, man, this is this crazy talk, but apparently the physics works and it's something that's going to be tested. And that is on Mars 2020, uh, which actually uh, NASA has a new name for. This is our big mission, which we're going to be sending a much larger, an autonomous rover to Mars. will be able to drive itself around, not wait for us to tell it what to go do more advanced collection system samples, sampling, et cetera, which will give us way more information than we've had about the red planet than before, hopefully. And one of the things they're going to have on there, and by the way, the rover yeah, is called Perseverance. Not my choice. But the uh, they're putting a little uh, payload on there, a helicopter. Wait, I, I, I thought the atmosphere was so thin that you could barely have a glider, much less a helicopter on there. Tell us to NASA, Brian. The, uh, uh, well, the difference would be is you got 40% gravity, right? And you got these blades, but if they spin faster, they can actually, there actually is some, there's interesting some uh, aerodynamics where you look at like how you would get an airplane to work on Mars, which seems counterintuitive. But the idea is that if you go fast enough and think about this too, we have, air, we have aircraft that fly at a hundred thousand feet. Okay. Yeah. We have aircraft that fly at a hundred thousand feet, which is roughly you know, the thickness of like Mars's atmosphere. So if we can make aircraft on Earth that can fly at that level, then the idea is then, you know, if you take a helicopter, because of that 40% gravity, because of that reduced, you're, you're, you get more power out of what you're doing. Or you can, your batteries, you can carry more powder, bat power. Now, I feel like they're really missing out on an opportunity here because they're calling it a helicopter, which makes sense because if you say quadcopter, you're going to picture four blades out on four arms. These are three blades, all one on top of each other, like a like a triple layer ice cream uh, birthday cake. Um, feel like they're missing the chance to call it a tricopter. Tricopter is a pretty cool name. Maybe I'm alone in that. Oh, I think I think. I think we lost everybody. <laughs> they were so disgusted. <laughs> they they peaced out. Uh, yeah, we're having a little bit of network uh, hiccups today. Let me try joining the call one more time. And happen in terms of space exploration that we still don't have of uh, uh, you know capacity to uh, uh, like just that we're just now getting to that point of, of having a helicopter and getting those kinds of aerial shots and stuff like that. So uh, uh, you guys, you guys, I assume hung up and discussed once you heard my pitch to call this a tricopter, because that's a cool name that nobody's used yet. Uh, I, 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 I didn't know that there was a, I thought we were still going. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. We, we totally dropped. <laughs> uh, it was just as I pitched my idea and it was met with silence from the sharks. <laughs> I'm trying to pull There's up the that video. There's a moment again. where you, you say something to a group of people and we know this is performers 
and you get this reaction, and we think that they're acting like the Unimind, that they're all somehow through telepathy like, oh, boo this guy, oh, this. <laughs> and reality, they're going like, I don't think they heard what he said. You hear what he said? I don't think what he heard it. But you're like, oh, jeez, that just, yeah. that just failed. Oh, my oh, God, God, you guys must hate this. <laughs> uh, here, here's the footage that we were looking at when uh, uh, when we lost the, the connection here. Yeah, my pitch was... I like since they're yeah they're they're three blades all in a vertical column and and i've never heard anything called a tricopter before we we have a a quadcopter and a hexcopter (laughs) i want a tricopter have you seen actually the like the 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 the, the tricopters like in the traditional sort of like a trish like the quadcopter layout but the three ca- the three blade versions I, of those I, I was wondering like is there is that inherently unstable is there is that the reason that we don't see those um you do but so the the, the advantage of two of, of of having um an equal number of blades is they can counter rotate against each other which can provide balance but the fast ones, the racing ones, actually are tricopters. They're inherently a bit unstable, but they're actually faster. So you'll see these racing uh, copters that are tricopters. That's interesting because if you're racing, you're not worried about redundancy because, like a quadcopter, let's say one of the three uh, is operating at twenty percent efficiency, then then the corresponding other side can operate at twenty percent efficiency. Whereas tricopter, uh, if if one breaks, you're fairly unbalanced, and that's the end of it. Yeah, there is a, a very uh, it was an interesting research that came out by uh, I think with some MIT researchers and basically on these one part of what makes these 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 pretty functional and what makes them work is the software and there's like uh, uh, I, I'm working on a project right now where one of it uh, you know I've got a grad student who's rewriting software to do fun stuff with with them and you get into realizing like how much of this is what makes it work is you know the math to get you know each blade to do what it's supposed to do you plug in a formula and say there's four motors versus three this is the propeller size all that and the software takes over but mit came out with like basically like a kind of a machine learning version of this where you're able to give the quadcopter or the multi-copter like mismatched blades and motors and really weird configurations and it figured out how to fly i which, like like i understand oh God, really? Like, logically, that makes sense because there's some amount of propulsion each unit can give, some number of RPMs that offset based on the the, the, the the rotor size and so on. In fact, I can even imagine one where you start chopping off halves of, of individual blades and just it learns how to sync everything up and, mm-hmm. and go up. That's extraordinary, though. Like, yeah, I, can, this, can you imagine what Burning Man's going to look like once once they get their hands on this technology? These highly bizarre, super asymmetrical flying pterodactyl beasts? Because yeah, part of the challenge is that, like, you, you have to make these adjustments so quickly and not overcompensate that the thing flips. You know, the thing just falls apart. And that was what was cool, is that in real time, this, you know, this artificially intelligent software was basically adjusting and keeping the thing from flipping and having a catastrophic mistake. And that's one of the things that you do in a... Uh, 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 AI like learning. We've talked about like OpenAI had like AI gym and had these things where you try to teach things how to walk, and you're basically coming up with very simple algorithms to you know if you have knee motors and ankle motors, all this. What's the simplest way to get this thing to figure out balance and to keep moving forward? Um, so it's a neat you know look at how sophisticated software can learn to solve a problem that was never presented with before. Yeah, we're watching uh, various 3D simulations of various bizarrely shaped objects learn to walk. Yeah, this is a yeah, deep mind. It has this like four legged spider and it's figured out how to talk. You know, we look at it like, oh, it's a thing walking. Like, like no, but it had to learn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've, we've learned the most efficient running strategy. It's yeah. called run, runs like a little child. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> We're watching these these animated figures. <laughs> I love, that are just this one's my favorite. It's got like a left hand have... just fist pumping the entire time <laughs> as it yeah. jumps and runs. I'm running, baby! <laughs> very very amusing running strategies because this thing's trying to balance itself, and it's like, it's oh, called... I got these arms. I'm just pump them in the air. It's called the yes yes yes. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh no! Wah, wah. That's <laughs> so, amazing. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, take a look at like learning to walk, AI training itself, whatever. And and it's funny because yeah, it like it's comedic to us. We're like, ha, ha, it fell, and, you know. And then well, no, it'll be cold that, comfort that, when they're chasing after us. 
that's basically the the machine ver- uh, version or machine learning version of of like Quop that the that yeah Q W O P yeah uh, keyboard game where it's like very very difficult to take a step let alone run which is like uh, ostensibly the point of it but this is like taking that problem that is very hard for us. Uh, to do mechanically and machine learning that solution. I saw, yeah. I believe there's like a an iteration of the same idea of Quop, but for speaking, like it's speech simulator. And so you have to, you have to move lips and tongues and everything in order to form words. And uh, uh, there you go, speaking simulator 2018. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Very goofy looking face trying to mouth words. <laughs> oh. I must, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's horrific yeah. so in the spirit of advancing things <laughs> moving forward uh, SpaceX has been pushing forward on the Starship and let me know if you've heard this one they had a mishap with oh. their Starship prototype this, this one I saw the headline and I clicked and I was waiting for the explosion and I didn't see an explosion uh, so it's like but it's heart was broken on the inside or something like that I'm like what yeah, yeah was, you know you, you can kind of tell uh, which part of the press is kind of not amused by Elon Musk or is ready to you know make a thing when it's not a thing you know and so what this was is SN3 which is their prototype number three not to be confused with SN2 which exploded SN3, they were doing a, a pressure, they're doing these pressure tests. It's basically, right now, what they're trying to do is these rockets are very, very, very thin fuel tanks. Okay. They're made of stainless steel, they're welded together, and they've got to put uh, liquid oxygen and they've got to put, uh, in this case, liquid methane in there, right? And so, but they test this using nitrogen or whatever to see, to pr- try to pressurize as much as they can. Last time, previously untested one of these things, is they had a too much pressure, what have you, and the thing exploded. This time, there is this, we're watching this failure where they have a, uh, I think there's a liquid oxygen chamber, which is above the liquid methane chamber. And what's happening is that it looks like the lower chamber may not have had full pressurization. And so the top of it has got so much weight, it's crushing. Now, what's similar to was we had a rocket called the Atlas rocket, and the Atlas rocket was fascinating because it was basically an aluminum balloon where the only way you could put that thing upright was to pressurize it because if it wasn't pressurized, that rocket would crumble on its own weight. And if you look up Atlas rocket, mishaps, whatever, you see like a rocket on the you know the gantry and you just watch this thing go crumble because it lost pressure, a little thing. Now, this rocket can stand on its own, but not if you have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of tons of fuel above it and nothing below it. Yeah, the uh, it reminds me a lot of the old uh, Mr. Wizard show uh, on Nickelodeon, where I believe he had kind of a, a regular fuel can filled with uh, with warm air or whatever, and then uh, he pours cold water over it, and the whole thing just implodes, just collapses in on itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So here we're looking at the uh, the Atl- Atlas Centaur AC-5 launch failure, and I think we're going to pan up in a moment. And so this was a lightweight rocket because what they did was they avoided basically having as much of a supporting structure because the brilliance of it was like, listen, rockets are re- really just big fuel tanks with little motors strapped to them. And if you could reduce the weight of the fuel tank as much as possible, <clears throat> then you get more power. And here was somebody realized if you always kept the lower section pressurized, that would add as a support structure. Oh. So we're seeing we're seeing this Atlas Centaur AC5 uh, from uh, wow 1965 begin to take off. Man, I I still uh, side recommendation. Uh, Apollo 11 is really an extraordinary uh, documentary to watch from CNN Films. Yeah, there might be. There's another film of this where you see the whole rocket and you watch i think yeah this may be an engine out failure we, there's another one where you see the whole rocket on top of it just crumble that's crazy. because it's a, it's a balloon the atlas was really like this and people when elon was building the starship like oh is it like an atlas where, oh here we go this is it uh if you see this thing on you see the thing that's it's on the launch pad and then all of a sudden it's starting to bend over because Whoa! it's Oh, it looks like pressure. the whole thing's made of tinfoil and it's just collapsing under its own weight. Wow. Right? Wow. It was. 
it was made of aluminum foil, basically. Like the thickness of this thing was extremely thin. That's crazy. And all it took was just a little bit of a pressure leak in that lower chamber, and it just deflates like a bounce house. Wow. So, rockets be hard. Yeah. You should make a science out of it. Yeah. Y'all want to jump into some picks? Yeah. All right, I got a pick. Uh, obviously, we uh, are in strange times. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, sacrifices that a lot of people have to make, but... Uh, as we all are uh, having to make sacrifices with our own schedule of uh, events and things that we might have been looking forward to, uh, some of those big, massive gatherings are unable to happen. One of those this weekend was WrestleMania, which is normally an event ha held in a stadium with 80 to 90,000 people uh, sold out around the country every year. Uh, this time it happened from a, a warehouse in Orlando. But if you are somebody that is into entertainment, that is into live performance, that is into understanding how crowds affect things, how you get what you need to dial up, what can be dialed back, the chances that you need to take, then uh, I found uh, WrestleMania, you don't have, if you're not a wrestling fan, don't watch the whole thing necessarily. But uh, each night, they did two nights of it, they did one very cinematic match literally shooting it like a movie. Uh, and, and those have been the ones that really got the most uh, traction, but it's very interesting to see them try to, um, you know, stretch the medium as they now no longer have a key element of not only their business model, but also, uh, but also their um, uh, uh, presentation. You know, a crowd's a huge part of, of WrestleMania and they didn't have it. So they had to make do. It, it was very, very interesting. Yeah, somebody tweeted last night, in case you missed it, we're watching John Cena battle the supernatural embodiment of his own fears and anxieties of becoming a successful actor. Uh, I have no doubt that that is no exaggeration in exactly what just happened. It, it was, <laughs> and it was very weird and very bizarre, but... Uh, in, in a weird way, it kind of felt a little bit like the future. Not only the fact that, obviously, who knows when the next time everyone's going to be able to pack into even, you know, they do weekly shows of two shows a week where they're packing in anywhere between ten to 20,000 people into an arena. God knows when that's going to be legal, let alone comfortable, where people are going to want to do that. Uh, but But the other side of it was like, yeah, they just went full art film. And, and the, uh, night one was... Undertaker in this very bizarre, uh, you know, kind of a, a backwoods uh, sort of horror show. And then the second one was a little bit more lighthearted, but it it had this very it sort of vibe to it, like this wrestling it uh, uh, where John Cena was the was the victim. But it was it's something it, it is. It is worthwhile to check out just to see when when uh, a company like that is up against the wall, what kind of creative decisions they make. What was the wrestling show they used to shoot in Orlando over at Universal Studios because when I had my offices there I remember like on Tuesday nights or whatever you just have there to be a sound stage with a bunch of wrestlers hanging around craft services table and stuff um that is it I, I feel bad that I can't remember the name of that organization that is, that is TNA TNA, TNA. Oh, that's TNA. Right. That's right. that's right. okay that yeah. was, I thought that was it and that was such a weird thing because I'd be walking around the office a lot or whatever you'd see all these guys just standing there it was like you know one night a week they're all just sort of there and it's like they had like I think a token audience in there or something, but it was well, just the, the, they would get the, they would get theme park. They would get the theme park audience. So as as a matter of fact, like hey, I, I, yeah. one of my friends when when I when I performed at Universal Orlando, one of my friends who enjoyed the show and we'd hang out about uh, a lot. His name was Gene. He uh, uh, would make a habit of going to all the TNA shows and everybody's you know clapping and maybe pumping their fists or whatever. But he was like, no no no, there should be something a little bit bigger. And so all he did was start uh, waving a towel over his head. But he was the only dude waving a white towel over his head. And so later, he began, people began to recognize him as they're like, towel dude, you're towel dude. And then at some point, they used footage for one of the TNA video games. And that was like one of his, his favorite moments was seeing himself uh, in a video game whipping his towel around in the background. <laughs> Uh, I, um, I got a pick. Uh, yeah, it's it's a tepid pick, by which I mean 
in spirit, I love what they're going for. In execution, it's a little slow, a little soft. It's great if it's on in the background while you're doing something else, taking the bulk of your attention. It's very slow in plotting if you give it your full attention, but I think it's worthy for what they're aiming for. I'm three sep episodes in to the new Amazon original uh, is Tales from the Loop, and uh, this is all work um, based on, on the artwork of, I uh, forget the dude's name, he's a foreign dude. Uh, it's got Jonathan Price in it, who you may remove, remember from uh, uh, either as the leader or the of the Sparrows in Game of Thrones or uh, as the lead in Brazil. Uh, it's it's it reminds me a lot of the golden age of science fiction short stories, where each one is fairly hit or miss. Each one is a very simple uh, concept. It feels a little bit kind of Twilight Zoney, um, but uh, for for what it is, I, I've 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 enjoyed it well enough. But keep in mind, this comes from a place where I've literally consumed all of the rest of the media that exists. So now uh, I'm glad that <laughs> Tales from the Loop is there for me as well. Is this an anthology like the yeah. Electric well, Dreams show that Amazon did? Ish, although each one builds on what came before. Like uh, a character that is a main character in episode one will mm -hmm. be a background character in episode two. And the, the other main character of episode two will be a background character in episode three and so on. So they're kind of connected. Uh, that, I mean, they, they, they seem deep enough connected. Uh, from what I understand, there's... There's short stories that have been written. If you've ever seen this dude's original artwork, it's great. It's this wonderful blend of architecture and uh, 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 commercial items from from who knows what era. Uh, it it, it and along with just crazy robots and and decayed buildings and so on, or living buildings. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the very first episode, kids in the wood, and there's like a big ATST walking around, and they're all like, uh, somebody's throwing a rock at it. And it's like, what are you doing? Well, if you hit its eye, it's good luck. And then there's like a vague question thrown out about where do they come from? They're like, who knows? Who knows any of this stuff? Everything's crazy up here. It, it reminds me a little bit of sort of that, that Stephen King, Dark Tower, like everything has become strange. And we know it has something to do with what they call the loop, an institution that's underground. Um, uh, I, I think this is one of those shows that you will find agonizingly slow and painful while you're watching it. But the images will stick around with you. And uh, the first three episodes, in terms of, you know, small short stories, I think they each end the stick landing. Hmm. But I don't know. I've enjoyed it. I'm looking, forward to, I'm looking forward to checking it out. I was excited about it because I love, love, love that artwork. And, and just basing a thing on a thing with no inherent plot is always like, it's why video games are problematic. But it sounds like they executed this better than you could probably have hoped for. You know, well, you know it came out that it get a lot of attention was amazing stories on Apple TV. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. come and gone. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, so so Amazing Stories, is uh, did it do well, or was it well-reviewed? Well, in fact, it, nobody talked about it. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, it looks like the IMDb rating is only slightly bigger on uh, Tales from the Loop than um, uh, Amazing Stories. But Tales from the Loop is decidedly adult. It's decidedly 18+. plus. I think there's boobies and titties in every single episode. Oh, yeah, because what I had heard oh. of Amazing Stories was that it's good for a kid's show. Right. Whereas this is this is more adult, but also, um, man, I tell you what, like I think I think there are great thirty-seven minute episodes in each hour-long episode of these, uh, which oh. which you can decide. Uh, that's the trade-off. If what you really want is to linger on these gorgeous visuals that are meant to be evocative of the original concept art, then you kind of have to go slow. But again, if you're playing Hearthstone while you watch it. Uh, those are delightful visuals that will sit with you and stories that are simple <laughs> enough that you don't feel like you missed anything. One of my frustrations with Black Mirror was just that, was like, man, there was a really cool 20-minute episode in this hour, you, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's been, if there is a weakness, I would say, for streaming television, particularly anthology shows, you know, standalone shows, is that they always try to meet these sort of runner longing, run, longer running times, and very often, they're just so much, you don't get the 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 benefit of making choices that's and, that's how i felt about the electric sheep show amazon did about the the philip k dick short stories yeah they mm -hmm. all felt fine but way too long and i think like like black mirror going black mirror going to netflix definitely 
I think hurt it because it didn't have to fit within an hour long time frame either. Like the, those episodes inflated to their detriment. We know it's a problem when you're able to do a series called two sentence horror stories and each episode's 30 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a pick. I think this was a tentative pick last week, but then I ended up binging it and I really dug it. It is uh, Netflix's Ozark. Uh, Ozark's oh, back. wonderful. Uh, it's this new season's great. Uh, you you finished? Do you? Did you finish I, I, I got I got all the way caught up, and I have to revise my feeling. I think my rich in, initial review is what I loved about season one is that electric. Oh my god, this guy's screwed feeling, and how he keeps barely staying alive, but he's screwed. Yeah. Um, season two gets out of that, and they begin to try to establish themselves as a in a place of power. Now there, there certainly is danger associated with it, but season three, that whole family are power players and it's a different story, but it's also very good. It's like what, once I let go of my favorite part being the desperation, then all of a sudden I enjoyed it a lot more. And uh, Ruth is the star of that show. She is fantastic. She is a great character and I'm, and I'm just uh, enamored by her. Although I don't necessarily like where they seem to be setting her up for going into season four. Uh, and like with, with the show like this getting, you know, being in its third season now, like what I appreciate about Ozark is that it keeps bringing in new characters and kind of rotate, flushing people out. Uh, because when you have a, 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 any sort of drama like this, there's always the danger of we have these characters. We can't kill any of these characters. Let's just put new people together. And there are a couple of connections in season three where like, you just you just had these two people in the town and you needed to do something with them but it it uh <laughs> there are some surprise connections yes. in season 3 <laughs> um but beyond all of that like i think all the stuff with the casino works really really well uh and yeah just the, they keep digging that hole they keep digging that hole and somehow it's still working so uh ozark very good a very good season 3 on netflix cool well, I've got a, uh, I got a pick. It's a shameless plug for my own book, The Girl Beneath the Sea. Oh, wait a minute. look, oh. it's adorable and, that and, you're and, pitching Andrew, your book. I can't wait for one of my buddies to recommend this book. <laughs> look, I, I, I can't I, I, wait for that. Andrew, I'm no, sorry. We never had this talk. Look, friends are like, man, it's promoting this stuff. Sorry, Andrew, we, we've had this talk. I understand that we all have pet projects, but we only talk about major best-selling products on this show. It has to be something that's really killing it in the mainstream in order to make it on our lists. I mean, name one plaudit with your new book, The Girl Beneath the Sea, available at the Amazon Kindle store right now. Well, if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's free. Uh, okay. You get the ebook for free. That's almost as impressive as the fact that I was trying to tee you up to brag on the fact that it's still number one. Number one. Number one bestseller. It, it's the number one book in the Kindle store. It's been there now for six days, which has been amazing. Uh, and uh, if you're a Prime member, you can get it for free, which is really cool. So I've been excited about having this book out. I've had this. I first wrote the first one well over a year ago and it's you know half a thing that you can't really talk about until the thing comes out but also i got it, it won a slot is a uh, selection of the month for amazon prime reads which was just amazing to have that naturalist won that before in the past and then getting this selected for that's great which means a lot of people get the chance to see it so if you're an amazon prime member you can get this for free um it's going to be available uh at large on may 1st uh, and also what I like, though, too, is the audiobook pricing on this is pretty inexpensive, too, when that gets released, et cetera. Most of all, I love the story. It's about Sloane McPearson. She's a police diver in South Florida who comes from sort of a a bit of a, a family with a little bit of a sketchy history there. And she finds herself immersed in a case that's bigger than herself, and she has to realize what does she want to do with her life. Maybe she will go into law enforcement in a more serious capacity. It involves scuba diving. It involves drug cartels. It involves uh, a lot of uh, action adventure, and it was a lot of fun to write. And the sequel is be will be coming out next year. So, the girl beneath the sea. I hope you guys check it out. And I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. If you've read it, if you've read it and you liked it, please go on Amazon and tell people something to like about it. And this is the way I feel about reviews: is that a review can do two things. Either it, it, I don't believe reviews should necessarily persuade, particularly when it comes to books, because there's a million books out there. You want people to find the book that they want. And I say, hey, tell people what you like about a book, because then people will go, oh, this is for me. Or they'll go like, oh, uh, maybe another time or something different. 
So if you don't haven't read it, leave a review for somebody else's book too. I'm like, just, I can't tell you how much it helps authors or YouTube creators or podcasters. Reviews move so much of the world. We have so much unexercised power right now as consumers. We don't even think about it. You know, your ability to say something can have way, a really well-written review on a podcast page on YouTube or in a comment on YouTube or on Amazon can be more persuasive than a mention in the New York Times. This is like a fact. So, anyhow, The Girl Beneath the Sea, available now. Boom, number one, baby! Yay! How many days in a row? How many days in a row now? Six days. If we hit tomorrow, it'll be a full week at the number one slot. A week at the top. See what the world already knows. By the way, I would imagine that if I were in your position, I would be obsessively hitting refresh on those reviews. As you as you round the corner to the statistically significant number, yeah, you're sitting at a at a, at a fat and cozy four and a half stars, my friend. Congratulations. Yeah, I'll tell you the 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 thing that happens though. The po more popular a book gets, the wider the audience for it, and then you find you come to people who are go like, oh, I'll give this I'll this give this category a try. And you you see that I you see that sort of the, the little kind of flattening of that thing, and that's what? the thing you have to mentally prepare yourself for. Because I think uh, stars on like, yeah, like enjoy it. I think we talked about this before, but on a modern rogue video or a scam nation video, I get a little bit antsy if the thumbs up to thumbs down ratio is over ninety nine percent, because that's code for we haven't burst out of our bubble, we haven't we haven't gotten out where everybody can actually see it. And uh, so instead, like, uh, there's actually, I, I kind of get excited when there's suddenly there's an uptick in downvotes because it implies that it's being uh, recommended to a lot more people. Yeah, for sure. That's, you know, kind of the, 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 the weird thing. And the thing, too, I've noticed, like, if you do a good, competent sequel, you'll watch your numbers go, your ratings go up. And, and I'm not like, I'm like, well, it's not like I became a better writer. It's just that if you finished the first book, you were on board with this. If you didn't like the first yeah. book, then you're not going to go to the second one. Right. Um, so you know, in, in an environment like that, where it's highly, can be very highly linear moving from one to the other, you see that pattern. But I'm thrilled. People seem to like it. People seem to love Sloan and uh, couldn't be happier with what's happening with the book. Not the world in general. Make that very clear oh. <laughs> with the book. So, gentlemen, it's been weird. Mm -hmm. Boo -boo -boo -boo. Okay, hey, that's a program. That's a program. When you're <laughs> done talking to your friends over Skype, to that's a program. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like Bryce is editorializing the making of that. Well, that was a a program. <laughs> no, that was a great show. Like, I don't know. It's not quite a quibby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like the Lawrence of Arabia of quibbies. Am I mean, right? You guys just kept going. <laughs> I've been quibby to the gills since uh, midnight. A now. special uh, six-part quibby miniseries. <laughs> Weird things. We really did a, a six quibby show on that one. Really, really came in at I six. I give it full six quibbies. quibbies out of quibbies. <laughs> I was the punked the punked quibby show that they got is 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 all right. Punked it still holds up. Uh, have you have you watched the is is the Reno nine one one out? I don't think it's out yet. Yeah, I I didn't see that in the lineup. Um, I did watch uh, what is it? All the feels from the dodo. Yeah. Huh? Brought to you by Feels CBD oil. No, it's. Uh, do you know about the dodo? Have you ever seen any of the dodo uh, videos? Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with with the the property, although I forget. Uh, is it's it, it's just all cute animal videos. Yeah, okay. And so that's all this is. It's just here's three minutes of a three legged dog, but now it's in in the portrait view, so you can not turn your phone. Oh, how do you, how do you <laughs> like that portrait view? Fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You can tell when they have to. Uh, like when they want to cut away to the audience that in, you know, in horizontal view, you would just cut. Um, but in the portrait view, you kind of have, sometimes they will do like a split screen thing. So you will like see 
almost a widescreen of the audience like on top and then a border and then uh, that's not a bad workaround it's and, all right, and to, to it, be honest i know that's that's an easy punching bag but but if you innovate in that i mean it's more more natural to hold your phone in portrait mode than it is to hold it in landscape so sure. if you innovate in that format and make it comfortable and tell enough story then i i don't yeah. hate portrait the way i used to i don't know we uh by the way, uh, uh, breaking news here uh, that is historical, if somber, uh, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, has been moved to intensive care because Jeez. of the coronavirus. I, Louise. Oh, wow. I did I did hear that he had put on, been put on a ventilator last night. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, that's rough. Because, like, yesterday oh. they were like, oh, he's just going in for, like, routine checks. Or, like, that's – nobody believes that. You yeah. know, like – oh, uh, my gosh. That's just – I mean, it just shows you just, I mean, this is a real danger when a G7 head of state is in intensive care because of it. Because if there's anybody that's literally being protected from it at all times, it is a head of state in the in the, in the process of all this. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, uh, not to, uh, he's a very interesting guy. I think he's a very smart guy, but we watch that video where he talks about like you know going to the hospital and talking i met all the with these coronavirus patients and i shook their hands oh geez i think i need to restart this route go, hey uh, uh it sound, it, we're, we're, we're having chronic troubles do you mind if we do a total router reset thing and then and yeah. bring back the yeah. stream okay cool okay uh i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it running as much as we can everybody um uh, but uh, you may see us drop a little bit, so we'll be back in just a few minutes as we... She and I in the morning will go walk. That's like our new thing. It's like we go walk in, like as soon as we wake up at like six, we'll both go just take a walk down the block and then come mm -hmm. back. And we're not really running into people. Although one time we did have uh, a homeless dude hacking so loud that it was like honestly terrifying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think we're back. Cool. Are we live? Yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, um, for me, the, the, the biggest thing is just, uh, trying to balance out. All right, let's make sure we're safe. Let's make sure that we're taking all the precautions, but also starting to build up my mind to like, no, this is going to be the new normal soon, uh, wherein I need to take precautions and I should cover my mouth and I should social distance. And like, 
I'm going to need to be in a world where that's just the way that you go to the grocery store and that's the way that mm-hmm. you go to other stuff. And like, I need to, I need to prepare myself for that because that's going to come sooner than the place we're at now. And, uh, I, I want to be a part of that. Uh, but yeah, the, the other side of it too, is that, um, you know, I went on a walk, I do like a big walk every Friday from like Piedmont down to Jack London square, about three miles. And, um, like everybody I saw, like every, every Asian corner store market, everybody's social distance line, eight people allowed, uh, you know, and, and people were respecting it. Almost everybody I saw had a mask. Like it was, uh, you know, uh, at least up here in our little postage stamp of uh, America, it seems like people are, are really kind of dialed into it, which if you look at the new – Murray model projections, it looks like California, which is, you know, 39 million people might have by the end of this under 2000 deaths, which would be a massive, massive win considering the population centers and the fact that we got a lot of the early cases. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, you guys want to do after things? Sure. Sure. Uh, I guess there's no, no, no desire for me to do a post apocalyptic, um, scenario anymore yeah right (laughs) all right well journey quest is we're living we're all living journey quest now yes uh all right the connection seems (laughs) Uh, surprise everybody it's been journey quest all i want to know is when this is over do we get to do like a party like at the end of the turn of the jedi the ewok party Man, we've been talking about this in the happy hour i'm convinced everybody's gonna f word as soon as they're allowed to Everybody just touching everybody. <laughs> We've eradicated all disease. No, no, it's not like that. <laughs> all right, I'll count you in for after things then in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Mann, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Justin Robert Young. Hey. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, everybody, that's me. So, uh, gentlemen, I want to talk about, um, well, I want to talk to Bryce. Bryce, you are an explorer. Mm. You are an adventurer. You have ventured your toes into the water of a brand new entertainment experience. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> the, 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 the vision of a new age. The, uh, the quick bite, the, the Quibi launched. Yeah. Quibi launched on Sunday, which, uh, Seems like maybe one of the worst days you could have launched a service like this on, but okay. Uh, also, like, like, was there any announcement? Like, it seemed like it was a fairly quiet launch. I, I think we all knew the night, ne- knew the date, but never put it together. I think we were distracted <laughs> by other things. So, Quibi is, uh, is this new original streaming service made for phones, and so they have all these original shows um, that are. Uh, I, I think they're meant to be five to ten minutes long, broadly, um, and uh, you watch it on your phone, and you pay five dollars a month at least uh, for the pleasure of doing so. Um, I don't know. There are a lot of different types of shows. What should I? What should I start off with? Well, uh, uh, well first of all, start off another... with the part where the, where you consciously decided I want to pay five dollars. Well, and... well, can I can I give just a little more background too? Just to understand the size hmm. of this effort. Uh, Quibi is got a billion dollars in backing, a billion dollars in backing from the likes of uh, Disney, NBC Universal, Sony, Warner, Liberty Global, Viacom, Alibaba. Mm-hmm. Um, it's headed by the founder is Jeffrey Katzenberg, the K in DreamWorks SKG, and also uh, Meg Whitman, CEO Meg Whitman, who was you know there for the the large growth period of eBay. These are giants. One is an industry giant in the tech world, and Katzenberg, who's an innovator in the entertainment space. So it's not just like some out of nowhere thing and a billion dollars financing for an entertainment company, a new model. This is big. It's well, very uh, big they, are, they are paying for stars. There is star power on here. They have uh, acquired the uh, you know and re and brought back certain beloved franchises. Like like they are they are trying to produce the kind of uh, content that would get people onto a subscription platform. Uh, Of course, as Bryce alluded to, this was theoretically a platform for people on the go, uh, commutes, uh, waiting in certain places. 
There's not as much of that now, uh, uh, obviously, as we are in a quarantine world. No way for them to, of course, you know, know that when they set this in motion. Because, uh, uh, you know, Brian, how long ago do you think, do you estimate the first time you heard the term Queeby in terms of them making something on cord killers. It was it was over a year ago. We've been covering this story on cord killers, and keep in mind uh, for longtime listeners, I I believe our take right at the beginning was that it smelled an awful lot like Vessel. Vessel was wanting to set itself up as an alternative to YouTube by artificially paying off all of the top YouTube creators to delay their posts a week. And uh, so please. I think in this most jo- cases it was two weeks. I think our one week was a was was a lucky thing. Wow, was a, a, was a weird thing. Yeah. Oh wow. Or maybe it was three days. It was either three days or two weeks. It, we we were like a weird anomaly in that thing. Well, I know I know that at some point they wanted us to stop giving away free stuff on Fridays in real time, and they wanted us to have that be on Vessel and then wait a week and then have it be on YouTube, which means. Uh, it would be quite literally that Mr. Show sketch, the uh, the pre-taped call-in show, <laughs> where every time we published a new giveaway, it would have already been over <laughs> week after week after yeah. week. We yeah we <laughs> did we do that? Did, I, we, I we, we figured we, out something. We, we that, had but. a bit of a fussing back and forth yeah. over over whether or not. Yeah, but, so, but again, so this, ultimately, that was the problem with Vessel is they couldn't artificially force uh everybody to delay stuff because there's news and commentary shows and people are doing things that are of of the moment yeah. and and so that, quibi is like all originals even like the news programming like this is a separate beat like there's a bbc program that is produced for vessel polygons doing a video game one for vessel so it's not like they're quibi no no uh, quibi 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 hey look i i wouldn't mistake you i, I wouldn't blame you for mistaking the two yeah uh uh, also, well, I would. I mean, I I never. I understand, but I would never make that comparison because to me, Vessel was like, "Hey, it's YouTube. Now pay for it." You know, and it's like uh, we're well, here. It's like Vessel, this is Netflix, and this is this, but shorter. Vessel is similar in that. Uh, first of all, it was, I believe, probably the second biggest uh, called shot. I, I think they got financed to over 150 million dollars. It's not quite the billion dollars that we're seeing from Quibi, which just tells me that I suspect Quibi will take longer to crumble. Uh, which, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> Bryce, what are your initial impressions with Quibi? So I signed up for the free 90-day trial because I'm not on the right T-Mobile plan to get Quibi for free. Um, mm. And um, let, let's let's talk about the shows, I guess. Here, we can we can look at some of the shows here. Like, okay, so Survive is their big one. That's It's got Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones and, and that so-so X-Men movie. Um, you know, this, it's like a big narrative drama about, a, a young woman who's about to be released from a, I don't know if you would call it like, it was not, it was, it's not a halfway house, but like a re- rehabilitation house for young, young adults who have like, um, uh, anorexia and suicidal tendencies, depression, you know, um, that it, 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 it that feels like a drama that feels like like the story thing that they're trying to do, but to do it in a six minute thing, you only really get like, you know, the first act of an episode of like, if you were, if this was on a Netflix that you only, the first episode is just, uh, Hey, here's all the setup for six minutes and then go and watch the next thing. I think the formatting really feels weird for, um, a, a dramatic story show like that. Did, uh, so it's not a case where Netflix style they release an entire season of a Quibi show all at once. They're doing week after week. Oh. Some of them are. Some of them are weekly. Some of, and a lot of them have multiple episodes out. So like I watched two episodes of Chrissy's Court, Chrissy Teigen's uh, a courtroom show, and it seems like there are a few episodes of that already. Um, and that that one's weird. Okay, so like Chris, I I don't know much about Chrissy Teigen. Do you guys know anything about Chrissy nope. Teigen? I know, I know that Chrissy, is. yeah, Chrissy Teigen is uh, a model uh, married to uh, John Legend, and uh, she has a very feisty Twitter account. But mm-hmm. but uh, I would I would take a wild guess and say that she's probably more on the lifestyle influencer 
uh, kind of uh, a, a world for a demographic that is not represented on this program. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so she does, it is a Judge Judy style, like arbitration court situation, but it's also, you know, seven minutes long. And so it, it's trying, it, it tries to be like, it knows it's goofy. It knows that she has, there's no reason for her to be a judge or to be doing this. And so the cases are, pretty goofy and she handles them very goofy and you kind of can't tell whether it's trying to be a goofy show where it's like hey we're all like kind of like nailed it on netflix right Mm -hmm. we're we're all friends here we're all really we just gotta someone just needs to say what's going on and like a real arbitration show where like this is a this is a case that needs kind of someone needs to solve this you know the first episode is about like a young guy who goes to a restaurant and there's a singer there and he He's singing Sinatra songs and the young guy asks, Hey, do you know any, do you know a rap song? Can you, can I request a, that you do a rap song? The old man like jumps back, hits his speaker and it knocks over. And so he's suing the young guy for a thousand dollars to fix the speaker. <laughs> and so spoiler alert, they both got the thousand dollars. That's how these shows work. Right. <laughs> and so like John legend comes out and the speaker is there and like, it works. Like they are both singing songs in this six minute thing. Um, and then it ends with uh, Christy Teigen say, yeah, you're responsible. You have to pay him a thousand dollars, but I'm going to pay it for you. Like, like very abruptly saying like, I, but I'm going to pay it for it. Cause obviously it's like, you bumped into your own thing. So I, I don't know what it's, I, 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 I have a very hard time trying to wrap my mind over, um, what that's trying to be. Would you watch Chrissy's how, court? How do you, how do you inject real stakes into something that short like like enough to right. justify that level of production expenditure well but it, like think about judge judy right like you got a 22 minute show there each case would be about 11 minutes anyway so you kind of just have to you you rush through something that would already be rather short um but then like the, with that speaker case you could definitely tell that they were just i mean john legend comes out he's a, got a celebrity cameo you know in this program so it's uh, I, okay. it, it's do a mixture you, of like do stretching you believe and that yeah. there's even a nugget of truth to this whole case or was this written was this conceived of written up in a writer's room mm-hmm. and extras hired to portray this ridiculous quote-unquote lawsuit which by the way how would they even find out about this lawsuit it's not like they're trolling through actual california court records in order to find this stuff right i i don't know so i like i watched the second episode and it's about (laughs) it's about this man and woman who are he would not say that they're in a relationship he called it a situationship which is a whole explanation in the show it's it's already been trademarked black ladies red flag (laughs) and so he's like hey well you know she i sold her the title to one of my two cars and she's behind on the payments on it and so i want her to pay you know the four thousand dollars whatever she owes me for the payments on this car and like half of that episode is like what is your relationship? Are you in a mar- Are you actually together? She thinks you would be boyfriend and girlfriend, but you think you're in this situationship. And oh, isn't it funny that situationship is a weird word? And I asked you to describe it, and you said, "Oh yeah, because it's like a boat, because you focused on the ship part, like, re- like very goofy stuff." But also the car is like it's like a nice car. It's like a Bentley. Like, it, like it, it does feel, f- it feels fake and phony. So, situation wise, just, just on that side is that. Yeah. You know, a big part of the entertainment industry is people who casting for these shows. And what you do is you put out a thing on Craigslist, you put it down here everywhere, and you say, hey, do you have a legal dispute or somebody with somebody else that you'd want to take to TV? Because remember, both parties got to agree to go to TV, but it starts with at least one person mm-hmm. who says, who answers an ad or something saying, yeah, I've got an issue. And, and sure, early episodes like this, they're going to be overproduced, everybody's going to be coached, but it will be often, it's a real thing, but it was settled a while ago or whatever, and you know, but yeah, I it's, I'm ugh. I want this to succeed. I want a new form of entertainment. I've been fascinated by microtainment, this sort of thing, because I think that's a neat thing. I'm looking through the page of the shows here. There is nothing that has my interest. And then with the idea that they're four minutes or seven minutes long makes me have even less of an interest. Now, hold on, Andrew. You're missing the best part. There's no way for you to watch any of these free unless you sign up for a free trial and eventually pay month after month. Ah. So discoverability 
is non-existence. You don't have to worry about. Oh God. <laughs> you know, we, we, we've talked about Queeby for a while, but one of the things that I think is just fascinating is if you see how much money, star power, effort. I mean, like it's been a running joke amongst. Uh, you know, Andrew lives in L.A. We all have connections to to the television uh, industry on one way or another. Uh, but how much of a a running gag somebody you know is getting a paycheck from Queeby <laughs> uh, because they were microwaving so much content over the last two years, uh, much of which was finding its footing, but they're all kind of like trying to figure out this format before they even see what people are going to react to it, which is just a fascinating uh, situation. But in comparison, it's like, will more people watch this Sophie Turner written, produced, shot drama, or if she went on TikTok and tried to balance a, 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 a broom on her fort on her on her chin would that get more eyeballs you mm -hmm. know there's there's just such a such a weird world we're in right now uh, like the sophie turner thing i'm just now reading the description of it on the show and that none of this concept about what the show is about is in the first episode <laughs> you don't even make it long enough to the idea that she gets on a plane let alone like is in the wreck so like it, it, like I think the format is just bad for most of this stuff. I think the best stuff has been kind of the daily essentials, like the things that they're going to be doing very regularly. Like a BBC has a program, a news program about international news for six minutes and it's just right. You know, it is, it's not very long. The guy gets right into it. It's got segments. So you, you can in the app, see what the news stories are and jump to whatever the chapter you want to be at. Um, like, I think that's a really good fit for it in a way that some of the scripted stuff isn't. I mean, uh, literally, that that's a format that's been around forever. One of my favorite things when I used to live in New York, and I even listened to it for long after there, was 1010 Wins, which their slogan, the entire point of their station is, you give us 10 minutes, we give you the world. They do 10-minute things. That's, that's all they do. It's just the same. It's the news stories as they evolve going forward, uh, you know, section by section, but it's like, this is a, a version of that. But uh, if, if what we find or what the uh, Queeby finds is the most trafficked stuff on their platform are news programs, I think they're going to be they're, they're, that's, and, that's, and that's I, a problem. I will mm -hmm. vouch for the idea that, you know, we've seen successful uh, channels that are nothing but like 15 minute summaries of popular audiobooks or what have you. And mm -hmm. um, I think there's a place for your time is valuable. Let us maximize it. But number one, this is not the environment. This is where we want everything to take as long as possible so that we can we can lose ourselves in, in right. various forms of communication and entertainment. But number two, um, I, 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 nobody watches Lost and says, uh, man, if only that was six minutes long. Can you break that up, please? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah, a detriment I, to some of these shows. You know? I just... I, I keep because I keep in my head. It's like they made a big deal how they're going to spend over one billion dollars on content, which I know we haven't seen. This isn't everything they've bought or in development. We know there's a lot more, but you're like, this is what you launched with. This is what you launched with, and we're looking at going meh, and you're like, oh, you got three episodes of each. You've got 20 minutes, 21 minutes, or whatever of of you get one mm -hmm. episode of a thing divided into three, and we're supposed to go, oh wow, look at this, guys. Yeah. And Disney was smart. And the bait and switch was, look, Mandalorian, come sign up for Disney, Mandalorian. And then into Mandalorian, like, great, what's next? They're like, oh, yeah, no, that other stuff, <laughs> it's like almost a year away. Well, but but also, <laughs> like, like Sucker. once you're there for Mandalorian, they have a legitimate claim where it's just like, what are you going to do? Tell your kids you're taking away Disney Plus? A good luck with that. Oh, I think if you're a family, that's one thing. But, like, uh, for the many Americans who aren't or don't have children at like that age, you're like, oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I'm yeah. Let, let me let me know let me know when Mandalorian's back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the only reason I have Disney Plus is because my mom wants it, and so I'm paying for it for her. I would. But there's I, nothing on it for me. I would. Oh, I would ever by, watch. By the way, uh, light drama here. We've never discussed this, and it's totally fine if that's the case. But are we on the same HBO account? 
because I've noticed a lot of shows that are midway through when I go to watch them. Yes, okay, we are. Still That's on, fine. Okay. We're done. All right, good. Drama done. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to scratch that itch because I was almost certain. Like, yeah, so like, I jumped back come, on it a couple months ago. How come every Larry Sanders I go to watch is already finished? What's going on? <laughs> well, you watched Larry Sanders before me. You already. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, you, you know, one of the other things is like the the short form format just doesn't work for some of these shows. They have a game show called Game Show, G-A-Y-M-E. Uh, Why is that spelled like that, Bryce? Because <laughs> it's, So it's about gay culture, but the two contestants that they have on are two straight guys. And so they make... I'm, their... not, I'm, not, I'm not following. Do they some... How do they... Do they do a test for this, by the way? Well, so... It's it's a lot of, like, UCB guys. Like, it's a lot of guys I've, I've listened to on podcasts being on this thing. And... and this show doesn't work like in six minutes this show doesn't work like they are trying to fit in three rounds of this game with these two contestants which are like here's and it's like even even okay let's say we broke we we took it to its base level which is like this is just a they're trying to do a gay version of whose line is it anyway right more or less but with straight people? With straight contestants, right. But but let's say you took Whose Line Is It Anyway. Right. Would Whose Line Is It Anyway be any funny in six minutes if you tried to fit in three different bits? Well, every, in oh, six geez, minutes? Oh, jeez, Louise. Uh, no, the no, way that would. works is you shoot for two hours and then you throw away 80% of it mm -hmm. and you fi figure out the best like 18 minutes and then those are three episodes. Like right. like Like in other words... The formula for success, if you type in whose line is it anyway on YouTube, you will find uh, three good clips where they took the best six minutes out of everything. Right. And so this doesn't work. Like there's a lot of production value. And I know that, you know, they're, they're doing a obviously hugely campy bit and none of it works. I have no interest in seeing which UCB guy is the queen of the straights, end quote. Ah, look at that. All right, Bryce. Obviously, with any kind of platform, when you're rolling out a lot of content, it's mm -hmm. not all going to work. So I'm going to need you as our Queeby expert to forecast for us what you believe the first Queeby show to be canceled will be. Oh, the first one to be canceled? Oh, I don't think they'll ever cancel any of them. I think the network itself will die before any one show is announced well, yeah, to have been killed. They're going to do their oh. runs of yeah. stuff. Like, and, like, and it may be... I don't think they're going to announce cancellations or anything. Um, but th but they will. I mean, even with Netflix, we no, make there, there we will, make a big deal of when something doesn't get renewed. Doing, yeah, yeah, that's that's where you get the announcement. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I mean, let's think about this. Like everything that we know so far has been done. They've done orders of this number of episodes or this whatever. Mm -hmm. So theory is we've never heard about a pickup. We'll hear about such and such got a pickup for another thing, but for things they own outright or whatever, it's not the same sort of thing because it's sure. not like they're competing with other companies for these deals to do this show and once you get a cancellation you go take it elsewhere and maybe in some cases so sure I mean, there will be things that don't get renewed but i don't know i just i don't know if it's going to work, work like the way we're used to working elsewhere i, I think it's going to be the big expensive story uh dramas like i i don't know what most dangerous game is i did not have an extra six minutes to watch this this morning <laughs> Uh, but, I, but, but, I but like, I think that or the Sophie turn, like, I, I think that's a thing where they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to do 10 episodes and it's done, you know, or right. whatever. And then it's done. Um, yeah. So it, it is kind of hard to answer that on the flip side. Like, I think I think punked is going to be really good. I think punked the two that I saw, I think it's it's just right. Like, here's we're doing. We've got Meg the Stallion and we, we told her that her dog, someone, her dog escaped. And, oh, no, she thinks there's a gorilla out there. And she thinks that gorilla is going to, uh, I don't know, steal her dog. And I mean, that, 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 is, that is probably a format that could be very easily reduced to six minutes. Meet yeah. the celebrity. Meet the prank. The prank is executed. The celebrity freaks out. That's your big crescendo, and then they they realize that oh, this is a prank. You get the you, and that's what punches. the show original show would have been. Yeah, right? yeah with that shows like three six minute segments. Right. Yeah. You, you know what be what would be interesting is a stated format that begins with a previously on 
that's not that alludes to things that are not available anywhere. Like imagine a six minute bit where it just begins with previously on, and it looks like these are all snippets from things that happened before, but there's no link. The, the hyperlinks don't work. There's no previous episodes to which these go, but then, you, but within 45 seconds, you're all caught up and then you get that six minute experience and then you're out. Hmm. Uh, well, I, you know, we've talked on Cord Killers before of different companies doing like, you know, shows that you can watch out of order. You can watch in any order and they have special apps to do that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just I think the big budget stuff just doesn't it just doesn't feel right. And I, I don't think that's a, I would if I'm watching a thing, if I watch a thing, I want to have a I want to have, you know, a full circle by the end of it. I want to, and that's why I think the punk stuff or the, the daily news things, I think at least those deliver on, on what is not really much different than was already on TV. Um, I don't know. It's, I got a 90 day trial. Oh, the other, okay. Here, the, the other show that I think is fine and kind of interesting is thanks a million. So this is like a big celebrity charity show. So like the first episode has got Jennifer Lopez. And so the idea is, the celebrities take a hundred thousand dollars in cash, and they go to someone who has touched their life, or they want to, um, they want to, you know, give this windfall to. And they say, "Here's a hundred thousand dollars. You get to keep half of it, and you have to give the half to some, another, the other half to somebody else." And so you follow that person as they go to give the fifty thousand dollars to someone else, and they say, "Hey, you get to keep." half of this and you have to go give the other half to someone else. And so there's this, it's like a, it ends up being. <laughs> so in other words, every episode ends with somebody being told your $2 and 50 cents <laughs> is yours, but you have to give the other half to the, the first episode is very weird because when the last guy, cause so it, it ends up at the $50,000 where they split it up. The $25,000 gives it to the other $25,000. And the first episode is very weird because he goes and gives it to who a woman who seems pretty well off and she's like thank you for twenty five thousand dollars i own a horse ranch in california so oh geez i think i'm okay um but feel goody stuff like little like i think it's a goofy premise but it fits in this we're not spending a lot of time in like doing like extreme home makeover we're just like here's the feel good here's the feel good here's the feel good there was jennifer lopez and i think those types of things where they try to <laughs> where they try to fit within the box try to fit within the box um, at least seem to be better fits. I think those are the things that are the most successful at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see whether or not we're we're gonna see that the, the traditional scripted stuff or adapting television formats are going to rise to the top of this platform or you had mentioned I don't know if it was before we started recording. But there's one channel that's just cute animals. Yeah. Like, that's just what it is. She has a bunch of cute animals doing cute animal things. And that's very internet content, right? That is not a television, necessarily a super television-y premise. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be curious to see if that does well. And that is, that's by the Dodo, which is one of these, you know, content farms like Viral Hog or Lad Bible or whatever. And I think a Queeby is the is a stated goal of one of these things, right? Someone pays us money for to every day, put out three video, three minutes of something, and we've got all this thing, so we will just reformat it to this, and now there's a very direct monetization thing. Because I've seen, you know, I, 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 along with, I'm sure everyone has seen, like, a Dodo video on Twitter or on Facebook or something, and it's cute, but what do you do if you just own a bunch of America's funniest home videos. Well, you turned well, it into a thing. And, uh, and this is uh, a thing. yeah, no, I, I like, I'm thinking about, you know, the atmosphere stuff that you see at the bars, the chive content mm -hmm. where they've acquired the licenses to all this stuff. But the problem is like, why, why would any of that be better? Like, yes, it's better for each individual vignette to be carved into five to 20 seconds a piece, but that stuff is meant to be waterfall television that's just constantly on in the background. Why would you adopt the tropes of appointment viewing television so that you could watch a limited six minutes of mm -hmm. the chive waterfall television? I, I don't know why well, you would do that. I think well, the idea... And, 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 also, mm -hmm. and also, all these platforms likely have... I mean, maybe not the Dodo specifically, but there is a Dodo-esque product on Instagram, Snapchat... Uh, TikTok, like all of these free platforms, they're still building up these gigantic audiences. And just on Quibi, they're getting paid for it. Yeah, and I think 
you know, you can follow a show. And so if this is this is one of the daily shows, so every day you hear, so you're, oh, hey, here's the new Dodo thing. And it becomes it becomes partly a monetary thing and partly like a brand thing. You know, if lad, you look at how big Lad Bible or like Nine Gag or any of these weird content mills are, how much how much name recognition they have created for just being America's Funniest Home Videos, but not even having the show, not even having the the framing of a sh- a show and those are and those are things like yeah they're using extremely cheap content and the margins are very slim and sometimes those work or not i and i still try to wrap my head around this because i'm like i'm like looking at like oh here's kind of an interesting show about like you know people renovating a drug cartel's mansion that's neat i'm like oh they're three episodes they're seven minutes long okay i'm gonna get invested in that <laughs> you know like yeah. i can't wait to watch this oh wow when's and that's like and that was a little bit like frustrating, like Apple TV was trying to play with that. Like, do we put out, we'll put out a few episodes and then we'll do each other one each week. And I remember like, like I started watching for all mankind. I'm like, Oh, I got to the last episode. Um, I'm never going to watch the rest of this again. Thanks. Bye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, I think that stuff is super weird. Cause you, when you open, you open, get the app and you really do get the feeling, like, Oh, there is a lot of stuff on here. Cause there are, Lots of those shows that have three, three quote unquote episodes in it, but they're all you know short. Uh, I you know I'll, I'll, I'll report back you know as time goes on. I have ninety days with this thing. This is why you are the bravest among us. This is why you are the greatest generation. <laughs> yeah. We salute you. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah. I, I, I I'm I'm hung up on this idea. I'm like, oh, let's look at this thing. I'm like. Well, that just looks like a direct-to-video movie. You know, that just looks like their their, their high-profile stuff is like. That, I would scroll past that on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like like oh, Sophie Turner's in a thriller. It's like, ah, if people say it's good, right? Like uh, one of the Hemsworths is is in with Christoph Waltz, and it's like that seems like a movie I wouldn't care about unless a friend told me it was great. Like, mm-hmm. uh, uh, it's just man. Quibi has been obviously it's it's been this kind of uh uh I mean a a, a punchline, right? I, I think at least <laughs> I, I mean us, it, yeah. it has been a speculative punchline because uh, that that's one of those things where I mean we certainly have been punching for over a year now, but that is us staking our claim. Like we will be the ones eating dog poop if it turns out to be the next big hot thing. Uh but now it may be an actual punching bag. Uh, where people who have consumed the product are now punching it. It just it just seemed like such a flawed idea from the jump where it, it, it's like, oh, we're relaunching the Titanic, but this time we're going to put holes in the boat so it goes faster. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem with the Titanic. It took three and a half hours to sink. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like, I, oh, we'll, we'll, th- th- there'll be no iceberg that can catch us because we're going to be so fast. <laughs> That's our thing. We're going to just be zooming around with all these holes. I want this to work so much. I want this to work so much. But I'm like, I'm like, huh, I'll get this. I understand. I, okay. I guess there's a rational here. And that's my frustration. Like, I don't understand. Like, granted, my idea of what you should do may not be the right idea what to do, but we're all going, eh, okay. Well, and, and I think... I think fundament like you know there's with with like Apple TV or Hulu or Netflix right the question is like what do you do with these shows when how do you put them out do you do every week do you do Netflix has been experimenting with like here's uh, you get three episodes this week and then three next week and then the last three the third week you know for some of the reality show reality shows but with this I think it's fine if you take a show and you break it up into small chunks. I think that that totally makes sense. I only have a few minutes. I'm going to watch it on the go. Like, here we go. But then why would I wait a week for seven minutes of this program? Because it's still a week, you know? But so I, 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 I think just fundamentally that can, that Bryce, you're thinking about it wrong. You're thinking week after week. Okay. If you wait around a month, you have almost a half hour show. <laughs> you almost have 30 <laughs> minutes. Come on. 
Come on. It's like, Get with the now, Bryce. <laughs> like, the scenario is like, it's never like they had to face the prospect of their girlfriend going off to college, a different one than you. You know, like, oh, come back in a week and we'll have the other episode. I don't know. A lot of TV out there. A lot of other <laughs> stuff out there. I might be committed to some other shows by then. Well, and that's the thing is that it is uh, fiercely um, uh, committed to being mobile only, which is another uh, a part of it. And and at least as of right now, there's no easy supported way for you to put it up on a large screen, right? You yeah. can probably airplay it if you want. Or like, ca- I, I, cast they it. could have come out with an Apple TV or a Roku app if they wanted. You know, yeah, they didn't want to meet us that way. That but was if like I, if I sat down on a TV for an hour, I'd watch. I'd end up watching their whole catalog because it, it, like, it, that's when it falls apart, right? Like, but it, no, but that would be good though, because then there would be something you would like, and you'd be telling us, "Oh no, this show is really good." But if you're if you're sitting there on your phone trying to find the three or four times a day where you can watch a thing, and you're kind of going this, I I think. I think they have the problem. I think they should absolutely make a TV app. I think they will. I think they're going to go. We need to get people on here. And is it wrong to have people watch this on their TV? Like, yeah, it'll be short, but they'll go to the next one. Yeah. You know, so I want to be wrong. I don't I don't want to, you know, all right. All right. Then let, then let me said, ask you this. I want six months from now to be raving about it. Uh, here, I'm going to ask you this since my canceled question just got pooped all over. <laughs> uh, 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 Andrew, by the end of the year, do they have a television app? Do they have a Roku, Apple TV app by the end of the year? Yes. I bet you they already have one that they could release. Uh, and I, they want to see their mobile engagement right now. In fact, um, to save face, I'm going to bet by the end of the year, they announce a radical new idea. We've bundled six to seven <laughs> quibbies in a row to create what we call an hour long show. It's We're amazing. Big B. <laughs> big B. Big B. That's right. Big B. Sometimes so people want big, big bites. Tell, the big tell is going to be when people reach that 90 day limit of the free trial. What's one? How many people are downloading the app right now? That's the first big thing. What has mm-hmm. been, and they've spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on this. How many people are getting it? Last I checked, they were like number two in entertainment or something, which probably means TikTok or whatever's number one. Two, how many people are saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to pay for this. And that's going to make them, they're going to have a lot of discussions about what's next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, it looks like they're number three in all the free apps on, on the iOS store right now, Quibi is. Right after Zoom and TikTok. Um, yeah, right now. In, in entertainment, uh, the top five are TikTok, Quibi, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, and Hulu. So, um, wow, I have not looked at the app charts today. Uh world's changed huh um (laughs) so yeah i mean i think it it would be great if i could watch the sophie turner show in a television like format because that's how i like to watch stuff and i think just trying to take that existing thing and fit it into the new format isn't what i need is stuff that takes advantage of the format that says this is a this is a new way to watch a thing here's a new thing to watch and that's why it's better to watch it this way and then branch out to the other to other traditional stuff that you would see in other places cuz i i i think the format can work and i think that there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of room to explore there but if if we're doing if we're just cutting up hour long dramas into you know these these things that you have to be watching six minutes for i mean how long if we took better call saul this a season of better call saul 10 episodes and broke it up into six to ten minute things that would be that would take you the whole episodes of better call saul it would take you the whole year just to just to come out once a week so yeah well i'm sure they're gonna probably boot in batch it's not i tell you a thing that i think is interesting is the thing that I was trying to figure out was like, we tried webisodes in the 90s. And, and webisodes, mm-hmm. granted, they were content that nobody could sell to a TV network or it was just crappy content that was packaged for this. When web episodes were a thing that people kept trying, these five to six minute things. It's, it is now a you know 25 year old idea. Okay, fine, maybe there's a place for it. Things that take off, like TikTok, you look at TikTok and like, well, look at people making funny little short videos on Snapchat or look at short YouTube videos. Like we had this pattern before of like, oh yeah, if you have tools and editing and music, people love to make little fun things. It's easy to produce. We'll have this tremendous amount of content mm-hmm. out there 
and that works because people like this stuff. Here, I'm like, like where, you know, like man, like I kept noticing my my kids were you know taking episodes of Game of Thrones and editing them down to just six minutes each because they only wanted to consume that much. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. it's, it's 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 a weird one. I don't hey know. man, so uh, my pick is Queeby. Get it while it's still here. <laughs> it's it's like a it's like a a, a a mayfly or a dandelion. Well, here today, gone tomorrow, Quibi. Get it while the I bite was quick. I downloaded Quibi, and that's my pick. I literally downloaded it onto my phone. Uh-huh. So uh, uh, I think it's a horrifying trend that it's not beating TikTok on the app charts right now. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, we will see. Mm-hmm. We will see in quick bites. <laughs> I see when I boot up, when I launch TikTok, I one of the pop up you only, you really only see ads when you right when you boot it up. I about half the time I see a Quibi ad. Uh, if that gives you any indication of who they're going for for this. Is they're like, hey kids, you like this free thing? Yeah. What if you paid for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And don't worry, your money will go to good use. We'll be buying more ads on this free platform to drive you to the thing that you pay for. <laughs> um. My pick is The Spot. It's a show about a bunch of kind of attractive people living in a Southern California beach house in Santa Monica um, with some kind of interesting sort of storylines, sort of like Melrose Place in a bit, if you remember that. Um, And so each episode is, you know, not too long. It's consumable. And you have to hop into a time machine to go back to 1995 when this show first aired on the web. (laughs) Oh my God. Look up the spot.com was what it was originally called. Okay. 25 years ago. That was the, I looked up webisode to see the first time that was used. (laughs) No, you were so bad. Oh shoot. I've seen this house in Santa Monica. If you go to the spot.com, you can see the, uh, (laughs) um, I'm sorry. My flash is out of right now. Now, now we're all just dancing on the grave of an episodic website. Oh my God! Ooh. Come on in. Ooh, I need flash. It does require flash. Oh, wow. Oh, no, the spot. Hey, do you trust 2018 Cyber Oasis Corp? I don't. <laughs> Powered by Vera Spray. <laughs> Oasis misspelled. <laughs> Won't be giving that flash. I don't think. All right. Um, no, no, no. But that's Oasis. Is it stands for OR system. <laughs> I like this was the metric. The site received over 100,000 hits a day. Yeah. A, a tremendous response for its time because, you know, hits that reliable metric. Yeah. A million hits guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to put a thousand JPEG images on each page, by the way. Don't worry why. We're just going to do this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I I want. I want it, I want this to be a one where like there are things like like I remember like Wonder Woman is coming out. I'm like, oh really, Wonder Woman? How good? And I'm like, oh, it was really fun. This is a really good movie. And I'm like, I'm glad. I I like to go look at past Andrew and be like, you dummy, this was good. Yeah. So I want that to be the case for QB. So it's my pick too. Forget the spot. Yay! <laughs> Quibby, Quibby forever. <laughs> the good thing is, if it's a huge hit, we'll go. Remember how we all picked it, guys. <laughs> exactly. We were here day one. We've been talking about Quibby for years. <laughs> so I like the fact we're recommending it. So show of hands, Bryce, you've already done. Who's actually going to download and watch stuff on here? I'm going to hold I've off. It. I've downloaded it. Uh, I don't think I will. <laughs> I think here's what it will take. If I get a text from my good friend, Bryce Neshkom Castillo, and he says, hey, no BS. I think that this is actually a good thing on Queeby. I will. I will. <laughs> try it hey uh you, you know uh, pe- people on right people trust us to give at least one real pick in our pick section so uh bryce real quick what did you think of mcmillions <sighs> <laughs> so okay are there if there are no cops listening right now i got really high on sunday and i watched mcmillions and it it, 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 it i lost my mind watching this show I thought, it is it the was, most boring nothing story going on stretched out into seven hour long stories oh we, we started 
we started the investigation and we had opened the investigation. We had to look at who could all of the people be. And we did not eliminate anybody. We eliminated none of the people when we opened the investigation into the McDonald's Monopoly scam. The way now the we have Monopoly... to begin our investigation. <laughs> now, the way the Monopoly game works is somebody would buy a fries. Dramatic reenactment of fries. somebody buying but fries. First, or see it in a magazine. Though, magazine. Get some files for my files. <laughs> now, the thing about color coding your files is... You don't want two colors that clo close to each other because let's say you have your receipts for your gas mileage, which is really important for an investigator, by the way, because you know we use cars to get from point A to point B. Many people don't think about that. You you want to know what's funny is that there are seven episodes of that show and seven episodes of Tiger King, <laughs> and there is and there is like in each in that run of the of the Tiger King show, you can pick out like four to five different movie premises, right? That are like unspooled in real time with actual video of the actual people. And a common complaint that I have heard multiple times about Tiger King is, ah, about an episode too long. <laughs> like that's something that's said about that show, which has the most insane story and the most insane visuals you will ever see. This is, uh, and I have not seen it yet, but based on what your guys have, have described to me, this is a recreation of a very compelling magazine article. <laughs> it is, it is, like, if, it is if like uh, someone watched an episode of Boston Legal and spent seven hours explaining it to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I went, to, we, we went, we called up McDonald's security and they arrived at the airport and I picked them up personally and we got in my Tercel and we did, and, <laughs> And Here's we just percent. said, we just said, hello, welcome, welcome to Florida. You know, we really didn't do any sort of small talk. And, and then uh, we uh, arrived at the building. Uh, we didn't say it. camera. And uh, what, what was he wearing? <laughs> it was a blue polo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you, you wonder when, sometimes why when they interview like, you know, official agents and stuff in shows that they're very, you know, they're very put up, they're put up and they're kind of very straightforward and they deliver the facts. And then you watch McMillions and you can tell that they are very happy that they have this agent who says cuss words because they just let him talk about anything. And it can be the most boring, <laughs> the most boring thing. And, and as long as he says, you know, the S word or, or the F word, like that's, that's all they needed. <laughs> it's so bad. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. People are actually, uh, Dan Wally here in the chat, mm. would McMillions have been better on Queeby? I think it would have been better shortened in any way. <laughs> well, yeah. That story, uh, the article that was based on it was fascinating because it was like an Atlantic piece. I remember reading it. Like the day it came out, I'm like, oh my God, this would be great as a movie or whatever. And by the end of the day, the movie rights had been bought. And yeah. it turned out that the guy who wrote that had had done that with several other stories that he flipped into into movie deals and big deals because he was he figured out like find these really great stories, do some deep reporting on it, and you know you're gonna make a deal with it. Uh but uh, yeah, maybe this not this format. Um I got yeah, I think I, I think yeah, to to uh, Andrew's point, when I heard that it was gonna be a feature film, I'm like Oh, this is great because you're going to be able to heighten these characters. The the story is compelling on how they did it and how would you rip it off. That is that's an, an interesting idea. But like when when I heard it was seven episodes for a documentary, I'm like, man, I kind of feel like I was I was satiated by that one little <laughs> that one mm -hmm. uh, uh, the magazine thing. That was like it wasn't exactly War and Peace, right? Like yeah. it out you in has really, five minutes. You can literally sum it up in a sentence to say. This is who did it. And you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> this you know, dude yeah. gave him to his friends. End of tweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. trying to see, because HBO produces, if they've ever done a documentary series before versus, like, a feature-length documentary. Because... Yeah, they have. They've they have. But this is, this is a very huge missed call to have stretch this out to be this or to be even this yeah. even if it was two or three parts or something even the, the gary shandling thing was multiple parts but it wasn't oh, no, no, but, but, but that was that was great because it re, it it featured so much raw never before released authentic behind the scenes footage that they happen mm -hmm. to have that that was you know, electric from beginning to end it's almost like hbo like went through sort of a content problem because they had like some huge thing that all of a sudden had an audience drop off and another huge thing that was supposed to cover for that never built an audience. And then this other thing that was going to do that 
kind of fizzled and you may have been telling people like stretch 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 mm, yeah maybe but i mean the good news is the way to fix that is to suddenly devalue your brand massively by expanding into now brian nbc's reruns of friends who would do that how <laughs> why would they do it where Kill would the act be wrap happening it up, wrap it up and when <laughs> yeah. um just so I'm going to give a real quick pick. If I say what's one of the longest running science fiction franchises, what comes to mind? Doctor Who? Twilight Zone. Okay. What's that? Twilight Zone. Okay. Uh, Star Trek? Sure. Right? Sure. Sure, sure. You know, a thing that doesn't get as much love that I think does, should, is Stargate. Oh, sure. Do you remember Stargate has had, there have been four, not including the weird web stuff, there have been four Stargate series. Okay, the original Stargate series based on the movie had 10 seasons, 10 seasons for that, which is incredible. That's like longer than any other Star Trek show was able to get. And then it had uh, they did Stargate Atlantis, which did like four seasons and the universe did two. And they had this weird Stargate Infinity cartoon, which I think uh, I don't think went very far. But like so those are on uh, Atlantis universe and Stargate are on Amazon Prime. And if you're looking for something to sort of dig into, um, check it out. You know, it is, I think it's a neat franchise. It's just a wonderful premise of let's explore the universe in but people from modern day times doing this. So cool. Nice. Yeah. I know it's a show that I always thought was cute and sort of it knew what it was. It knew what it was. So there you enjoyable. Go. Dude, dude, dude. So uh gentlemen. It's been after. Hey, good show, everybody. But when did we do the show? Oh, How did oh, we do the show? Yeah. All right, all right. Stretching too far. Stretching. Uh, uh, all right, guys, I'm going to bail so we can come right back for the happy hour. But I'm yeah, going to try see and eat in 30 real quick. Yeah, all right. That'll be in 30 minutes, everybody. Uh, uh, Andrew, I saw you were doing a lot of Periscopes over the weekend. Got any planned for this week? Oh, yeah. Andrew is going to be talking to the people and push, 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 promote, talk about writing, have a lot of fun talking about plot and character and everything else. Nice. So it's been very enjoyable doing that. I've missed doing that. At Andrew Main on Twitter, you'll see the Periscopes pop up there. Yep. Uh, Alrighty, we'll be back in about a half hour uh, to, uh, to for the happy hour. Bye, guys. Yeah.